in today's video, we'll be looking at creepy and bizarre TikToks that will make you rethink reality. There are many white people who mean right and in heart want to do right. But there are so few. If 10,000 rattlesnakes was coming down that aisle now, and I had a door here I could shut, and in that 10,000, 1,000 meant right. 1,000 rattlesnakes didn't want to bite me. I knew they were good. Should I let all these rattlesnakes come down, hoping that that 1,000 get together and farm a shield? <laughs> or should I just close the door and stay safe? I think that... You understand? The Viet Cong are not all bad, but America's still dropping bombs. In Hiroshima, the Japan wasn't bad, but she still dropped the bomb. In Korea, they weren't bad, but they still dropped the bomb. So mm. now I'm going to forget the 400 years of lynching and killing and raping and depriving my people of freedom, just and equality, the first fire, last heart, the lowest of low, last respected, and I'm going to look at two or three white people who are trying to do right and don't see the other million trying to kill me. Mm. I'm not that big of a fool. Yo, if you say he ain't got a point, you're lying. Your problem is that you are saying you don't want colonialism, but you embrace the borders that were brought by colonialism here. There were no borders here. Mm. They, they don't have borders in Europe. But when it comes to us, they say, no, you must have borders. Why? The division of Africa is what makes them thrive. They thrive on the division of the African continent. Can you imagine the minerals of DRC combined with the minerals of South Africa and with a new currency based on the minerals? <clears throat> what we can do to the dollar if we become a United States of Africa with our minerals alone, we can collapse the dollar. We can collapse the strong pound that is based on gold, yet they don't have a gold mine. <laughs> so why do you allow such things? Yo, he got a good point right there. Think about it, right? Imagine if you're in um, Missouri, right? And you need to get to Illinois. But for you to get to Illinois, you got to have a passport because that's a whole nother country. And then say, for instance, you want to, once you're in Illinois, you want to get somewhere else. You got to have your passport to get there. You want to take a plane from Illinois to Georgia. You need a passport to do so. That's how it is in Africa, right? And then also imagine this, right? Say you take your Illinois money and then you take it down to Georgia with you. Not only do you need a passport, but now you need to find a currency exchange because Georgia has a whole different currency different than yours. Africa has so many different currencies. It's ridiculous. And you wonder why they can't unite. You know, it's, it's meant to be the way it is but if they did take away the borders i mean that would be one crazy superpower wouldn't it and i think the rest of the world knows that as well fire and fury this book is on amazon already right now about what? the maui wildfires how the fuck they got a book already about the maui wildfires how? that shit don't make no who the fuck is Dr. Miles Stones? I looked him up, can't find nothing about him. But I put both the words together. Miles Stones. Miles, Miles Stones. Stones. I guess they reached a milestone by doing this fucked up shit right here. Because this don't make no sense. They got the description of the book right here. I will move out the way so you can do your thing. This shit is crazy because, yes, some of these pictures are these... Direct energy weapons are old pictures. Okay. That don't change the motherfucking fact that there are direct energy weapons. Mountain Dew. The Them Dews. Mountain Dew Hawaiian Blast. Mm. The programming at its fucking finest. Right there. What about people feeling their skin on fire without being touched by fire while this was happening? I guess it's because all the metals they're putting in the atmosphere and all the metals they're putting in our food. We need to detox because they're going to keep doing this shit right here, right? Mmm. Gonna... Yo. That just resonated right there. He's talking about all the metals that we put in our bodies and, and the foods, you know, and all these, you know, shots that we have to take with high levels of uh, metals. And then you have infants who, you know, their formulas like 60% metals. What it makes me think of, right? is there's this term called dustification. One of my uh, subscribers actually put me on to that term, so shout out to him. So dustification is a form of a do, right? And I think what I, what I see with dustification is that it will take metal 
and turn it into dust, right? Literally, it'll turn it into dust. So you guys can look this up as much as you want, fact check it all you want, but I'm pretty sure it'll turn it to dust. So therefore, if we as people have all of these heavy metals inside of our body, when they turn on this weapon to turn it into dust, what's going to happen? Think of Thanos. I keep doing this because they're building smart cities controlled by AI. Yes, 15 minute smart cities. Maui being one of them. This was already planned. Already. They shut the water off mm -hmm. so they couldn't extinguish the fires. The firefighters, the firemen couldn't even spray the water. The police were blocking people from leaving. And that's how people were dying in their fucking cars. That's messed up, ain't it? They canceled mm. school the same day as the fires. Investors coming to these people asking to buy their land right after the fucking fire. And people think shit's a joke. It's a game. This shit is serious. This is not a joke and it's not a game. But I ain't gonna lie. Some of this shit got me paranoid as a motherfucker. I was burning on one of my videos yesterday, right? And somebody brought it to my knowledge that you get strikes for shit like that. I had no idea. Or I wouldn't even done it. But they let the video rock. All the way until that person commented and then I commented back and then like five, ten minutes later, strike mm. right on my shit. But it's fine. I ain't tripping. I ain't worried about it. I just make another TikTok and my shit get banned. Yo, we gonna have to find out a way to communicate during with cold, cold words because they watching our ass like a hawk. Cause it's a great awakening happening. A lot of us are becoming awake, but there's a lot of motherfuckers that's not. And there's a lot of bots out here that they got on these apps. Acting like people from Maui trying to tell us that this shit wasn't a D-E-W attack. They be in my comments too. Okay. I don't trust y'all any motherfucking way. I think for myself. I do. And Ben have been doing it for a long time. This shit is crazy. It don't make sense. None of it adds up. And they're lying about the death toll. So hopefully we can figure some shit out. Until then, y'all, peace. Man, hopefully they don't cancel my channel. Pay attention. This is going on right now in Morocco. So Pay attention to a red sky. It's happening right now. I don't know how many times we have to say it, but planning Nibiru activity is kicking up. And now they saying we in the age of boiling. And they said it's getting hot outside. People starting to see more and more sightings of planet Nibiru. This was a video that I captured on my phone mm. of planet Nibiru on the sun. And as these days to come, we're going to start seeing more and more sightings of planet Nibiru until planet Nibiru is in front of our faces. Now we starting to see the climate change acting unregular. Yeah, I better start going outside and looking up. Let me know what y'all think about this one in the comments. Follow me on all other social media for more wisdom. Hit that plus button and stay tuned. So do y'all think all the red skies is from the Iron Giant Nibiru? Your toilet habits are now the choice between getting cancer and not getting cancer. Here's what's going on and what, what you need to change today. Our toilet paper has now been found to have PFAS chemicals, forever chemicals. These are chemicals that don't break down. And Look y'all, it's, it's so bad out here. You can't eat nothing, you can't drink nothing, you can't go outside and breathe nothing. You can't even wipe your own ass. That's how bad it is out here, man.
never leave and you're putting it onto some of the most absorbent skin in your body and these chemicals are then entering your bloodstream staying in your body causing inflammation and eventually cancer why do you think we now expect 50 percent of americans to get cancer at some point in their lifetime it's so prolific you need to make changes this means switching to organic toilet paper switching to a bidet and understanding if you're at home or your work prepare yourself and stop this daily introduction of chemicals into your bloodstream that will make you sick we need to talk about clones Part 16. Oh yeah, we know she is. Britney Spears attends the cloning center as a REM-driven clone version of herself when she goes to sleep, through the process of consciousness transfer from her original body to her duplicate REM-driven clone. Britney Spears has performed many songs I have made as a REM-driven clone version of myself from the cloning center through the process of consciousness transfer from my original body to my duplicate REM-driven clone. I made all of Britney's songs. The Hit Me Baby was about them smashing me there. Me, baby, one more time. I told them to make Britney wear the schoolgirl uniform, cause I knew it'd sell more and keep me from getting tortured again. Mm. Britney is no victim like people think. Has clone tortured me herself. And is mean as hell. She didn't mind being in assembly line when she was just getting famous. Anything went then. But once famous and rich using Donnie's songs she then wanted out and oh she's so distressed thing tortured the clone guts out of me personally several times. And when she was bored of it she would have some Nazi freak with no qualms do it for her. She wants me dead so no one finds out how nasty she's been to me and others and where her songs came from, wants out of cloning, but wants me to croak at the grand reveal so I can't add details or sue her. Last night a cloning Britney Spears was the leader of the Kill Donny campaigners. She cried and sobbed and blubbered out how she would be ruined how everyone in the world will hate her and others saying that the people that gave up one of their kids to be parasited by Avril would be hated by society maybe killed themselves. They, were saying and trying just about anything. Britney wants to be seen as a victim and emerge at the end a hero and get off scot-free with no details about her activities there, being a pig and victimizing me and other people for sport. Britney Spears says no one is going to accuse her of wanting to attend with all the anti-cloning stuff she has in her songs and videos, she says she is America's sweetheart and no one is going to charge her with anything and she will never be punished, that she is too powerful. In future whether I am dead or not, I want these people to pay dearly. Britney just wants out now cause she's rich famous and doesn't need them anymore. Married a cloner there so she wouldn't have to be an assembly line sex slave pig for any old rich Married goof that wanted cloner, to bang her. Huh? They're both filthy pigs. They both deserve to be executed. Sounds harsh but you just don't know. They are the bad guys, ever since Mickey Mouse Club. Christina Aguilera Britney Yo, yo, yo. The Mickey Mouse Club celebrity? Something up with them. Something up with Mickey Mouse in general, the whole Disney thing. Like, if you went through Disney, something happened. And, and your mind's messed up. That's all I'm saying. Spears and Justin Timberlake were only allowed to do songs that I made. Unknown why. Sometimes they treated it like a religious thing tried to say it was God or Satan whispering the song to me from another dimension. They're idiots. Britney Spears has also referenced the reality of the Illuminati's REM-driven human cloning subculture in the following music videos, Break the Ice. At the beginning of the Japanimation video, that is a clone cartoon version of Britney Spears being grown in a big thick tank full of water, 1 second to 7 seconds. Mm. And at 1, 32 minutes to 1, 43 minutes the cartoon version of Britney Spears walks into the cloning center. This is exactly how the cloning tubes are in real life. They are stacked one on top of the other, each filed with salty water. Britney Spears made this video because she said as a REM-driven human clone version of herself at the cloning center that a fantasy of hers is to blow up a cloning center. The Illuminati allowed Britney Spears to release this video because at the time the Illuminati believed that nobody would ever realize that human cloning is a reality which currently exists. Hold it against me. In Hold it against me, performed by Britney Spears, Britney Spears clones are depicted fighting each other at 2, 46 mm. minutes until the end of the video. And Mona Lisa, later remade by Britney Spears, Britney Spears changed the words in the song from Gone to Cloned. The lyrics to chorus are provided here because, it is currently unlikely that you will find the words cloned on a lyric sheet, although you can listen to the song and you will clearly hear the following. Let's listen, y'all. Britney Spears lyrics Mona Lisa. She's the original. Yeah, yeah. She's unforgettable. Yeah, yeah. 
she wants you to know, yeah, she's been cloned, it's kind of incredible, yeah yeah, she's so unpredictable, yeah yeah, she wants you to know, yeah, she's been cloned, she's been cloned, she's been cloned. She's the Yo, she said it right there. She just told us. Literally. She's been cloned. She's been cloned. Britney is a clone, y'all. Britney Spears and many famous people want you to know they have been cloned. People trapped in the Illuminati's REM-driven human cloning subculture are depending on you, and therefore this message must spread quickly and widely. Public figures cannot openly discuss this topic about the Illuminati's REM-driven human cloning subculture and warn the populace, and therefore they hint and reveal things in veiled messages such as Britney Spears has done in the examples of the songs provided above. This really is a world emergency and many lives depend on you to share and divulge the disclosures about the Illuminati's REM-driven human cloning subculture widely. Or is it yo, yo. We gotta talk about this REM-driven human cloning, guys. Look up rim driven human. I can't even say it. It's a tongue twister. Look it up and let me know in the comment section what you guys find. I've never heard the term before. This is my first time hearing rim driven cloning, right? So now I just, I, I need to go figure out what it's all about. Magnets. Tiny magnets placed on the ball. Magnets, huh? Showing a strong attraction to the metal rim. Watch. Man, if this true. That would be crazy. Baron gets more magnets. Don't believe me? Watch the NBA playoffs and you'll see there's really no other explanation. That's how Steph Curry be hitting shots from full court. Y'all want to see what a black militia looks like? This is Grandmaster Jay, the leader of the NFAC. Now this group right here, I could really say, was really for the people. On some real Malcolm X, Black Panther type shit. I mean, wherever it was trouble, wherever there was a situation where a police officer or a YT person unalived attacked or abused any black person or Hispanic, this group would show up and they would show up in numbers. Professional, military style, armed to the T. Mm -hmm. And they would pull up just like Tupac would pull up. Anytime our people had any signs of trouble by law enforcement or racist YT people. And just in a few months, this militia group reached numbers in the 5,000s. And they were ready, mm. ready to protect and serve the melanated carbonated people. That was all the way up until leader Grandmaster Jay accidentally, allegedly pointed a pew pew at a law enforcement officer. He is now serving time in prison. But mm -hmm. sources Dang say he may be released very soon. Dang on that, bro. You see, black people, we can protect and serve our own people. We just need the proper funding. We need to create our own jobs. And every black-owned business needs to be supported by our own people. We need to start a GoFundMe and put that money towards various resources. I have a few ideas coming up that I have yet to reveal. Pay attention. Did the Simpsons predict the future uh -oh, again? Here we go. Alert, alert. Turn Entertainment TV. purposes only. We Bitch Judge for an emergency broadcast. A sudden environmental catastrophe has rocked Springfield as a massive caterpillar swarm I just want to know how. to a standstill. Yeah. 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 Right. Right, a city in Nevada is dealing with an infestation that some are calling I biblical. How, Millions of migrating Mormon crickets. They're covering homes and roads in the city of Elko. I'm very this. How, how do y'all know? Insects have been swarming there for nearly two weeks now. So, like, I've never seen that many bugs in one spot unless it's like ants, you know? And, you know, because they're so small, they can be concentrated like that. But these crickets, this is unheard of. When we looked out here, it, the whole wall was just covered. That really, really, really freaks me out. Look at that. They was running over them. Dead crickets everywhere. I'm just confused. I'm just trying to process this in my brain on how do y'all know. Oh. 
I just need some answers on like how do everything line up so well years and years and years and years before it happened? Like, do y'all have a time machine? I'm just saying, and this just questions that I have. You feel what I'm saying? Personal questions. Do you niggas got a time machine? Because how do y'all keep being on point with everything? Everything. For the man, me start going to watch all of the Simpsons shows to see what hidden messages did I not catch. Yeah, the Simpsons on some shit. Let me know what y'all think about this Simpsons episode in the comments. Like and follow me for more wisdom. Hit that plus button and stay tuned. Hey, predictive programming at an all-time high. They probably do got a time machine, though. Your body is the beast. 666. Oh, six, yeah? six. Carbon. 6 protons, 6 electrons, 6 neutrons. We are known as carbon-based life forms. Your body is the beast. You are not your body. You are a spiritual and physical being combined into one. Your spirit is your higher self. Your physical is your ego. The Jehovah's Witness believe 144,000 will go to heaven. This is actually a frequency you need to achieve in order to go from the root chakra to the crown chakra, from turning matter into spirit. Your mind is the director of energy. So when you're directing your energy in your lower three chakras, you are at the lowest state of consciousness. You are in pure survival mode. Hey, think about what the lowest color is on the chakra system, right? It's red. What do you see in Hollyweird all the time, right? And on the music industry and all these award shows, red. They want you to be in your lowest state of vibration, the lowest state of frequency at all times. In order to go from matter to spirit, you need to first look at your diet. You need electric live food in your diet, fruits and vegetables. You consist of a toroidal field, you're a battery, you need charging, you don't need food. After this, you need to start meditating and detaching yourself from all the things you have attachments to. Detach from lust for sex, detach from food, detach from all these negative traits about yourself. You need to get out of your animal nature to your higher nature. The seven vowels are your seven chakras. By pronouncing them right, you can actually align the energies within your body. Your head is heaven, your heel on your foot is hell. <clears throat> Y'all, I was just trying to find that book, for real. So, now, as your soul is transcending this planet, nigga, most souls look into the light. It's the only light they see. You know what I'm saying? And they taught you in religion to go into the light your whole life. Mm -hmm. So if you was a true believer and had faith in any religion, right, you gonna hold that in your soul, nigga. So when you see that light, nigga, you like, oh, that's heaven. You're going to float into that motherfucker, nigga. And they're going to got him, snatch your ass up, bring you in, put you in a little container like this with dark matter energy, bolts around it to, to, to restrict your dark matter energy from leaving it. And then they take your soul and they bleach it of all its memories. Mm. And then they redirect it back down to this planet again because they know that once they come down here, you're going to step into a new avatar. Yo. How many people have seen the Disney movie Soul? Look, I didn't see a lot of Disney movies. I got a lot of children. Look, Soul is exactly what he's talking about right now. Ever since I watched that movie, it makes me never want to go into the light because once you go into the light, you can't come back to your body. You can't come back to this realm. And when you do, like he said, you don't have memories. You lose all your memories. And I've heard stories of people, you know, being able to retain memories from past lives. And it's just like, okay, if a person is able to do that, then that means that their soul was truly in a past life. And everyone must have one of those past lives. Why isn't everyone able to do so? Like you said, they must be bleaching your soul of all of your memories. All right. When women are pregnant, there is no life form in that. There's no life force. No soul is in that body until the, the, until the water break. There's no soul in the body of that baby until the water break. When you pregnant and the baby, you think the baby moving, ain't the baby moving. Remember, you full of water. So any object underwater that's moving around is knocking against something. It's going to float and bang against shit. And these scientists don't want to tell you the truth about you, nigga. They hid us from us because we the grand creators. So they got you thinking the whole time the baby is no. The soul, look, one, listen, the, the, the baby can't stand you once the soul into that body. That's why your water break. Goddess. 
Soon as that soul, that whole nine months, your body is, your avatar is being used to grow the avatar of that new, for that new soul. Your avatar, all right, is being used and his semen is being used to create a new avatar. You're preparing a new avatar for a new soul to drive in when it, while, to ride in while it's in this realm, this reality. All right? Because you can't walk in this reality with your astral body. It's rules. It's rules to the universe, nigga. As above, so below. It's laws to every realm and reality. Just like you can't take this body into the physical realm. You got to take your astral body. All right? Yo, so one thing I'm, I'm going to talk about. He said that, you know, the baby doesn't have a soul when it's in the mother's belly. I don't know the facts on this, but I'm going to have to disagree. Because... And he said that, you know, there's a lot of water in there and it's not the baby moving. It's just being pushed around. So basically he's saying like it's just nothing in there. A body, an avatar just being moved. But, and I know all moms out here can relate to this as well. You can literally feel that baby pushing on the belly. You know, you feel that footprint. You feel that handprint. You can feel it. The baby's moving around. Clear as day. Pay attention. Y'all can say what y'all want to say, but the Netflix is getting ready, bro. Mm. I don't give a fuck how old this video is. Do you see this big ass giant mm. doing push ups on the mountain? Now that is crazy. Preparing yeah. for Armageddon. And TikTok, this is just for entertainment purposes only. Like, he dead ass out there training. What is you training for, my boy? They really training to go to war with them high vibrational beings. I know it's gonna take a lot of training. Shit, that don't do nothing but make me train even harder. You feel me? Like I said, bro, this shit is not a game, bro. This is end times dead ass series, bro. Like all bullshit aside, I hope y'all are getting prepared mentally, spiritually, and physically for when this veil completely lift. Finna be seeing giants, dragons, mermaids, Aliens, whatever you think that is a conspiracy when that veil get lifted. Oh, you gonna see it But y'all know I'm just talking about some fairy tale land shit. You feel what I'm talking about? Don't take what I'm saying serious You know that that giant on top of the mountain was just CGI Let me know what y'all think about giants doing push-ups on mountains in the comments Go follow me for more wisdom hit that plus button and stay tuned Y'all think that was a giant up there? It looked like it, I can't lie. So Mark Zuckerberg, huh? Some crazy shit, shit Lisa. There is extreme corruption going on with the government here. They oh, took yeah. 150 meals to be delivered for the people in need that are starving and don't have food or water. They were denied because they don't have a commercial kitchen license. And the boats that are trying to leave and give supplies to Lahaina and the people in need are having to bust through barricades to deliver supplies. So it seems like at every single turn, the government is doing everything that they can to make sure that the people here that need help do not get help. Right. FEMA came and picked up a bunch of supplies and nobody knows where they went. I know in past FEMA situations, they found shipping containers full of supplies never given to those in need. So super sketchy. Something is very wrong with all of this. I mean, all of it. There are endless videos of survivors and the stories that they tell are absolutely wild. It was a firestorm. I know, but there was tornadoes of ash the size of charcoal from a barbecue. Like being thrown by baseball players. Like 15 seconds being submerged, then swam for like.
like a half mile north. It was like nothing you've ever seen. This was bad. That the people in their cars that were dead and from asphyxiation and the fire blew out the car, and you just saw the numbers of the dead are so wrong. People also authorized one time payments of seven hundred dollars per household folks have been displaced so they can do the immediate things of just taking care of medications and prescriptions that they so badly need president joe biden announced a whopping 700 dollars for maui fire victims the u.s has sent billions of dollars to ukrainians but only 700 bucks to hawaiians what kind of message is that sending to the rest of the world? Mm -hmm. Hawaii's Democratic Governor Josh Green sent a message clearly indicating a land grab by saying that he is already actively thinking about ways for the state to acquire the land that was annihilated by the blaze. Just a reminder, on January 3rd of 2023, Maui announced plans to become one of the first American smart cities or 15 minute cities. In order for a 15 minute city or smart city to be in implemented, the unelected globalists must first control the land with no private ownership. Mm. Listen closely to what Green had to say. Yep. Listen closely to what Green had to say. I'm already thinking about ways for the state to acquire that land so that we can put it into workforce housing to put it back into families. Hawaiians in Lahaina are already getting offers for their now available land from developers. There are many, many coincidences surrounding the Maui fires. But let's take a look closer at this one. Not that long ago, Hawaiian government officials in the areas that were just affected by the wildfires passed a law saying that that land could not be redistricted for new building permits unless some sort or some type of a serious natural disaster occurred. Serious natural mm. disaster occurred. So they created one. And what did we have? happened through those three districts of very sacred land to the Hawaiians. A very serious natural disaster. I'm not going to get into space lasers and all of that, but people called their insurance companies after the fire and the insurance companies for the first time informed them that there was zoning infractions on their land so they would not honor their insurance policies. Mm. And within 24 hours of these people losing their homes, the same developers who the Hawaiian elders fought in court to have that law passed are already calling these people and making them offers. That's crazy. Look, they already knew what they was doing, man. I feel if you know, you know family. We have Anthea. So if you don't know what this is, this is one of my favorite shows of all time. That's all I'm going to say. It is the man who fell to earth. I'm pretty sure it's on Showtime. And this is the the newer version. There was an older one a long time ago. Don't watch that one. Watch the newer one. It's mind blowing. The clouds have gone because of decisions made. There were 40 herd animals when I left. Everything was stillborn. Everything because of decisions. You may in the name of progress. This isn't even an argument. It's irrelevant. Irrelevant. There are only adepts because of us. The adepts that are alive are alive because of us. It was your names in the records, but it was never ever you. It mm. was always our Max Bender. I trained you better than this. I Sound like America. You. I finally got it through my thick skull. I train you too well if you think you can survive. Without us. Yo, listen, that's the world right now, today, right? You have a very small percentage of people who are in power, and the rest of the world create everything. If the rest of the world actually woke up, what do you think would happen? We'd be in control of our own destiny at that point. This is the scary story about sneaking out. One summer night, a girl named Kim snuck out of her house to go to a party. When she got to the party, she started saying hi to all of her friends got a couple drinks and started having a great time. Later that night when the party ended and everybody started to leave, Kim started walking home. And the whole time walking home, she had the strangest feeling that somebody was watching her. Mm. So Kim began walking a little bit faster. Then out of nowhere, a man dressed in all black appeared on the road. 
Kim then let out a terrifying scream as the man sprinted towards her. The next morning, Kim's parents were woken up by somebody knocking on the door. When Kim's father looked through the peephole, he saw Kim's face, so he immediately opened the door. But what he saw when he opened that door haunts him to this day. It was Kim's severed head hanging from a nail mm. above the door, with her head directly in front of the peephole. Mm. Kim's murderer was never found, and to this day, the case remains open. And the scary part is, this man could be out there still doing the same exact thing he did to Kim. Here's my honest opinion about- mm. Kids, do not sneak out at night, especially not by yourself. Certain horror movies might get a little controversial and some feathers might be ruffled, but I don't give a damn. As above, so below is extremely overrated. Yes, I said it. I know some of y'all hmm. might get really mad at me, but I don't give a fuck. The way people gas this movie, and when I finally gave it a chance, I was just sitting there like, bro, this movie is nothing but an hour and 40 minutes of piss poor decisions after piss poor decisions. This whole movie could have been avoided. It was all right. As impactful as the Blair Witch Project is, it pains me to say that movie is really not that great. Like, I understand what it did for the horror genre, what it did for the found footage genre, and what it did for film marketing. I think it was amazing. However, I think those aspects of the movie are better than the movie itself. One of those movies that's bad, but it gets a pass because of what it did. You know what I'm saying? This one might really get y'all mad. As terrible as the Nightmare on M Street remake what? from 2010 is, it is still better than a good majority of Nightmare on M Street films in the entire franchise. Yes, I fucking said it. The first nightmare, goaded. Second one, decent. Dream Warriors was sensational, but that was about it. And then New Nightmare was on point. So the fact that the 2010 Nightmare on M Street is a top five movie in the franchise to tell you something. Oh, I'm sorry. This one might be the one that really gets y'all mad. The original, it was fucking terrible. I don't care. Judge me all you want. I don't give a damn. Unfollow me if need be, but I'm sorry. Tim Curry did a great job as Pennywise. But that's about it. And what made it worse is that I rewatched it the same night after I watched the 2017 remake. I was on my little Pennywise binge, you know what I'm saying? So after I left the movie theater, came home, I put on the 1990 version thinking that I was going to get the same feeling that I had when I was a kid and I fucking didn't. I was pissed. Yeah, the remake shits on the original, point blank period. No, no disrespect to Tim Curry, though, no disrespect. And lastly, if Terrifier came out in the 80s, Art the Clown would be just as big, if not bigger than Jason, Freddy, and Michael. Yeah, I'm staying the 10 toes on that one. First of all, Terrifier 1 and 2 are both love letters to the 80s slasher genre. And in my opinion, Art the Clown did his fucking job, bro. If that man came out in the 80s, he would be just as big or bigger than them boys. And I'm 100% certain that if Art the Clown came out in the 80s, it would probably be about 9 to 10 Terrifier movies in the whole franchise. Them sequels would have went fucking crazy. All right, so there goes my honest opinion about certain horror movies. If I made you angry, I'm sorry, but I'm not. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I've probably only seen one of those horror movies that he was talking about, and I think that's the Nightmare on Elm Street one. Other than that, I ain't seen none of them loves. I haven't even seen the It the Clown joint. If your kids tell you they're seeing something called the Window Man, get out of there. Here's why. On August 2nd of 2023, a woman named Merced that goes by La Chica Bona began to experience objects moving around the house and things turning on on their own. One day, while looking at her backyard, she notices upside down hand marks on a pole as if someone had crawled down from the roof. Creeped out, but assuming it could just be her kids, she ignores it. On another day, while she's barbecuing near the area, her oldest son sees the marks and tells her, And those hand marks are from the window man. Now horrified by who or what this window man might be, one day, as she's making her son's bed, she sees this. Large shock hand marks can be seen as if some- Prove Billy Eilish on your soul. Man. Remember though now, mm -hmm. um, that I sold my soul to Satan? I wonder why. Now, what's up with the injections? That's the mm. second song depicting them. Hmm. That's two videos of her being injected with something. Black veins? Black goo? She gets injected by multiple hands. Then she grows wings, falls from the sky. I so far as long. 
Yeah, Billy. It's a rumor. It's just speculation. Nah, nah, nah. This is a scary story about the stare. A girl was sitting on a subway late one night when she noticed that the woman sitting across from her was staring intently at her. The woman was sitting between two old men. The girl kept looking away, but the woman wouldn't break eye contact with her. The stare was beginning to freak the girl out. At the next stop, a new passenger got on. It was a tall man in a gray trench coat. He sat down next to the girl. The woman paid no attention to the man in the trench coat. She just kept looking at the girl who was getting more and more creeped out as time went on. The two old men didn't even glance in her direction. She pretended not to notice, but each time she glanced at the strange woman, the stare continued. When the train was pulling into the next stop, the man in the trench coat got up to leave. Suddenly, he grabbed the girl's arm tightly, and as the doors opened, he dragged her off the train. The doors shut and the train pulled off, leaving the girl alone on the platform with the man in the trench coat. She started screaming out loud, begging for help. But the man in the trench coat said, Calm down, I just saved your life. I didn't mean to scare you, but I had to get you off that train. The woman sitting opposite of you was dead. Giants are actually real. Mm -hmm. Yes, you heard it right. Everyone knows that giants existed in the past, but what if they still existed in 2023? Mm -hmm. In January, a man named John Moore spotted a giant on top of a mountain in Canada. He posted a video of his discovery on TikTok, but shortly after he claimed that several black cars, all similar to typical CIA vehicles, were constantly parked outside his house. But what happens next will leave you speechless. A few days after this claim, he posted an extremely unusual video on his account, stating that the videos he had posted were fake, and many people claimed that he looked coerced. But that's not even the craziest part. After this video, no other videos appeared on his account. His followers were confused and started to investigate, and they discovered something extremely dark. They found out that John Moore had recently died under mysterious circumstances. Mm. What's your I take on this all. disturbing story? Tell me everything in the comments and share the video with your friends for a part. This horrifying legend happened. takes place in Canelton, Pennsylvania. I think I said that right. But this is the horrifying tale of Barbara Davidson. After the Revolutionary War, a family would settle down on a small piece of farmland. 1795 Canelton was a very, very small mining town just outside of Pittsburgh. And Barbara was the teenage daughter of Kara and Samuel. One weekend, Barbara's parents set off to go to Pittsburgh to get some supplies, and they left Barbara behind on the farm to tend to the animals as they had a thousand times before. They're only gone for a few days, and when they return back, they cannot find their daughter. They mm. look everywhere consistently for nearly a week, and they cannot find a her. Week? Eventually, something starts to smell a little off underneath their porch, and when they look, they find the gruesome discovery that their daughter Barbara had been shoved in the crawl space. But it gets even worse than that because Barbara was missing her head. This horribly gruesome crime was never solved and no one was charged. Yo. Locals state that even to this day on Canelton Road, you can see a fog no matter the weather. But it's not just a fog. In this fog, you will typically see some glowing red eyes. They aren't just floating red eyes though, they are attached to something. They are attached to a pig head. And that pig head is attached to Barbara. Now, where did this pig head come from? Many people believe that Barbara was wandering around looking for her own head and stumbled into a butcher shop and took a pig's head. And now that's what she wears instead of her own. And she is now lovingly known as the Pig Lady of Canelton. The follower that sent me this story told me that they had visited the road themselves and it feels off. Like the air is always consistently stale. If you guys have visited this area, please let me know if you've seen anything creepy. I need to visit this place. Mm. Be some crazy spirits out here. What's this? What the heck? Have you ever seen this before? Yo. What? Yes, Santa, I have, and let's break it down. This is a very short clip of a TikTok video that I was tagged in numerous times. In this clip, we can see an infant with a large and swollen head. A lot of people in the comments were wondering what was going on and sympathizing with the child. This condition right here is called hydrocephalus. 
Hydrocephalus is much more common in children as well as infants. And as we can see from this diagram right here, it's the result of excess cerebrospinal fluid building up in the brain and pushing outwards. That's the most obvious of symptom fluid. of hydrocephalus is of course the enlarged head size. This is one of the primary causes of hydrocephalus. If you want to pause it to read it, you can. Oh man, I really can't even see that, y'all. It says, uh, something and brain trauma can lead to bleeding inside brain ventricles, which can cause ventricular swelling due to excessive cerebrospinal fluid. This damages white matter in the brain and impairs the growth of cerebral cortex significantly impacting memory attention perception thought oh okay that's just so it impacts memory attention perception thought language and consciousness hydrocephalus wait ain't that how they said it cephalus oh hydrocephalus occurs as a secondary result of other brain injuries this brain damage occurs in a feedback loop to cause more damage than usually basically what they're saying is because you know it's a little blurry I ain't gonna lie um, it's caused from something else you know some trauma that happened to your brain and then that's what happens you know that's a consequence of that I don't want to make anybody mad but initially what I thought was man that baby got some alien DNA up in it you know what I'm saying <laughs> that's a mix that's a hybrid baby and it ain't work out right but I'm just saying you know that's initially you know like, they got a whole definition for it I mean I don't know I don't know y'all tell me but in summation, if you've already received the brain injury, hydrocephalus is a result of that. So it doesn't really happen by itself, typically. A lot of people were also asking if this is a painful condition, and yes, unfortunately, it is. The odds of getting it are pretty low as well, at 1 in 700. The family from the UK had been hearing strange noises around their house for several months. The house was pretty old, so they chalked it up to squeaky floorboards and rickety pipes. Until one day, they heard something else. It's unclear what exactly they heard but whatever it was, it scared them enough to leave their house that night. And once they got so far from the building, they saw this. I'll tell you something. Inside, man. Tap it on the window. Look at that. Oh, no. Nah. Top window. Yeah. Bottom window. And it's at the bottom, bottom too? No way. I got chills looking at this, y'all. Literally. Goosebumps right now. Man, it disappeared. Top window, right. Who the hell is going to zoom in on this? I'm leaving. I'm selling the house. We're moving up. I'm breaking my lease. Yep. Ain't no way I'm going back in there. It's obvious that any one of us could fake this. What do you guys think?
that's like the most darkest deep Mario stuff I ever even heard in my life. I did not know Mario could be scary or spooky or anything like that. I mean, Luigi's Mansion maybe, but that's about it. Published on the dark web with the title, The Dark Web is the One and Only Truth. The name itself is chilling, promising to reveal hidden things. What you're about to see could change what you know. This video takes you to a strange corner of the internet. As the video continues, you have to choose. What? Follow the revelations of this mysterious video, or turn back the clock to stay in your reality. But beware, exploring the dark web can be risky. Sometimes the truth is disturbing and can shake up what you believe. Proceed with caution, because once you've seen what's in this video, there's no turning back. You may discover a truth that's hard to ignore, hidden in the shadows of the dark web. Some people are saying that this is one of the craziest videos out there when it comes to glitches in the matrix. Other people are saying this is actually an alien or a reptilian. I'm gonna roll the video and let you decide. This was captured by Pro. What's up, Gringer. guys? Check this out. I'm watching this video on repeat. Your guys' comments are amazing. And someone just pointed something out that I cannot believe what I am seeing. All right, you see homeboys walk up to me with the dog, the strange dog, right? But check this out, right here at 42 seconds, you can see through dude with the glasses as he's walking past the tree. You can see the tree through him. Watch this right here. Here we go. Oh, snap. Hold up. Almost. As he's walking away, right there, you see through the tree. That's crazy. The Invisible Man, what's this? When the dark web reveals the truth, this video was posted with this title. It is the work of an anonymous source, hidden in the dark corners of the internet. In these enigmatic images, strange things appear that seem to be demons. Demons are symbols of darkness and malevolence. They are often linked to supernatural forces and evil powers that lurk beyond the veil of reality. In the dark web universe, Certain occult rituals and dark practices can be found, invoking these infernal creatures. The dark web can be a place where humanity's darkest fears and fantasies come to hmm. life, but it can also be a place where anonymity allows creativity to flourish, sometimes in macabre ways. Either way, it remains a territory to be explored with caution, as the dangers that reside there, whether tangible or imagined, can have very real consequences for those who dare to venture there. And watch the end. Yo, what's going on? It's, I gotta go on a dark web because this is some weird stuff. This man got goat legs. Read the urban legend you didn't know about. Tic Tic Japan. Tic Tic is said to be the host of a woman or high school girl who fell on a railway line and was cut in half by an oncoming train. The vengeful spirit outraged by her untimely death now haunts urban areas and train stations at night. Since she no longer has legs, she drags herself on her hands and elbows, which produces a chilling tic tic sound. Should you encounter tic tic, run if the malicious spirit catches you. She will slice you in half with a scythe. Although she lacks legs, she is extremely fast and has been known to keep up with cars. In some renditions of the story, she will ask you where her legs are, in which case you must reply Maishan Expressway in order to survive, in less hopeful iterations. Your only chance of survival is to outrun her, which is completely impossible. That's where do you think stuff. this person is from? What about this person? Australia. You might have guessed these people to be indigenous Australians, or perhaps people of the Pacific Islands, or even Africans. But they're actually Asian. members of various Adivasi tribes found in India. India. The people I showed you were specifically part of the Irula and Panya tribes. Now, according to the Out of Africa theory, humans first entered South Asia or India around 70,000 years ago. 
We refer to the people that formed a hunter-gatherer society in South Asia as the AASI. All South Asians partially descend from these early Homo sapiens that entered the subcontinent. Apparently, around 22% of my own DNA is derived from these ancient people. But the reason these tribal communities in India are so fascinating is because up to 70% of their DNA is derived from the AASI. And so some refer to them as the indigenous people. Have you ever stopped hmm. to wonder if monster creatures like the Megalodon and the Ogopogo and the Loch Ness Monster actually exist? Well, there should be videos of such creatures, and there are. I'm gonna show you guys a few of them and you tell me what you think in the end. Check this out. Aw oh, snap, what's that? What y'all think this is? Some type of creature. There's some crazy stuff in these waters. What was that? Y'all seen that thing duck? This makes me never want to swim in any open water, y'all. Nope. Take me to the nearest swimming pool. Because I'm good on that one. You've probably heard of the Russian sleep experiment, but did you know that this terrifying viral creepypasta is actually getting made into a real life movie known as the Soviet sleep experiment? The Russian sleep experiment is where they took five prisoners and put them in a room for 30 days without sleep. They would not only be pumping oxygen into these rooms, but days. also pinning them with amphetamine to ensure them to never fall asleep. The goal of this whole entire process was to see how the human mind acted without sleep. And let's just say things got crazy. 2018, there was supposed to be a movie released, but it never did. And now we're finally getting a real life adaptation of this viral creepypasta. And yes, if you're wondering what happened to them after not sleeping for 30 days, well, this did. They ended up losing their minds. Literally. Screaming so loud that their vocal cords broke, coughing and throwing up blood. Most of them didn't even make it. Only one did. At least according to the creepypasta. And let's just say the run-in that he had with said doctors that were doing this to him weren't so nice. The story goes that this last prisoner actually ripped apart every single one of the doctors and claimed that he was the embodiment of evil, the mind without sleep. Comment down mm. below if you guys are going to check this out and follow for more. Mm. Sorry, 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 sorry. Dang, famous TikToker, huh? As of literally two days ago, this famous TikToker and her mother have been convicted of murder. Hi, my name is mm. Ethan, and this week we are diving feet first into disturbing TikTok murders. Mahek Bukhari was a lifestyle and fashion influencer who had a little over 130,000 followers. In September of 2021, she posted this TikTok of her and her mother, 46-year-old Ansreen Bukhari. Despite Ansreen being married for over 20 years, she started a secret relationship with 21-year-old Saqib Hussein. In January of 2022, mm. she decided to end the secret affair however he would not let her and he threatened to share the very inappropriate pictures he had of her to her husband she then paid him three thousand dollars to keep his mouth shut however she received no confirmation that the images were actually deleted just a month later on february 11th 2022 sakib and his childhood friend were driving on the road to meet two women who were fake profiles created by the mom and daughter he was then followed by two mysterious cars and then called police saying and i quote they're trying to ram me off the road. They're trying to kill me. I'm going to die, end quote. The cars rammed into them, causing them to go off the road. They crashed and both of them passed away. Police quickly mm. traced it back to Mahek and her mother. And now after 18 long months, they are finally being convicted of murder. That's crazy. She was not trying to let that info If you out. get a feeling like somebody's watching you at night, this could be why. A YouTube user by the name Mr. Stouter has been waking up to strange sounds around his house late at night. And after looking around but finding no one, he 
decides to record a video to see if he can capture whatever's in his house. Yo, did y'all see that? I swear I thought I seen something. I could be tripping. I got goosebumps again, y'all. Freaking myself out too. He doesn't notice, but inside his spare right there. room, you see that? a dark figure can be seen watching him. Did Mr. Spouter go face Look. to face with oh an intruder? God. Or could it that? be something evil showing it? Goosebumps. Hello. Do you want to play a game? Let's play hide and seek with my Chucky haunted doll. What do you say? Let's go. Now, these are the rules. You and Chucky are gonna hide and I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna count to 10. And when I count to 10, I'm gonna come look for y'all. You have to hide, okay? If I find you in less than two minutes, what do you mean you don't wanna hide with Chucky? It's gonna be fine, don't worry. If I find you in less than two minutes, I win. Okay, ready? I'm gonna count. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. Damn. Okay, where could she be? I'm guessing she went in the room. And found you, Chucky. <laughs> That's creepy. No. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> found you. Why'd you make it so easy? Did you help Chucky? What do you mean? You shouldn't have- This is the scary story about okay. the call. There was a girl named Sophia who was in elementary school. It was the end of lunch break and she was sitting in class talking to her friends. When her teacher suddenly came over to her with a pale, serious face. She said, Sophia, I have some bad news. Your mother was in an accident at work. Get your things and go to the principal's office now. Sophia was shocked and didn't know what to think, but she packed her bag and went anyways. The principal was waiting for Sophia in his office. He said, I just got off the phone with your father. He told me your mother was badly injured. He's rushing to the hospital right now and he's going to pick you up on his way. You will wait outside and he will pick you up. Now hurry along. Sophia then said, but sir, I don't have a father. We are a single parent family. Mm. My dad died when I was a baby. The principal's jaw then dropped. After that, Sophia's mother then came to the school and complained. And she was completely fine and wasn't injured at all. The police were then called and nobody was able to walk home that day. To this day, Sophia still wonders who the mystery man was who called and what he planned to do with her once he managed to get his- was a woman going for a nighttime run, preparing herself by stretching her legs. As she begins her jog, she hears a loud truck horn and at the same time, a man overtakes her on the running track. Concerned, she looks to her left to check for an accident on the road. When Where'd she he turns her gaze forward again, the man who passed her is nowhere in sight. Suddenly, the same man wearing a helmet overtakes her. Oh, no. <sighs> she glances back, searching for anyone else trailing behind. Once more, when she no. looks ahead, the man with the helmet has vanished. Yeah. Uh, uh. Uh. For the third time, the man overtakes her, but this time he abruptly stops when the woman stops running. To her shock, the man starts running backward in an unnatural manner, revealing its inhuman nature. What? <laughs> he started backpedaling like a defensive back. <laughs> Fear overwhelms her and she instinctively runs away in panic. She rushes into her apartment building and enters the elevator, desperate to reach the safety of her home. However, to her horror, the strange creature has already reached her floor. Oh, no. She hastily exits the elevator and sprints towards her apartment. But when she turns around, then the creepy creature can be seen chasing after her. Backwards, too. I can't live in no apartment building like this, y'all. That's a huge apartment building. <laughs> she continues her way into her apartment, but just as she turns to close the door behind her, the mysterious entity can be seen standing ominously at her door. This is a scary story about April and her, scary. and it's absolutely shocking. There was a bus driving late at night, and it was completely packed full of people. 
Suddenly, an old woman on the bus became ill and she asked the bus driver to stop the bus. They were on a country road surrounded by a forest, so the driver told her to wait. But the old woman began to throw a fit, screaming and yelling at the bus driver, demanding him to stop the bus. The bus driver then pulled over to the side of the road and the old woman got out and ran into the woods. When the old woman came back from the woods, she was holding a little girl's hand who was crying. When they got back on the bus, everybody asked the little girl what was wrong. She said her mother brought her into the woods and placed her on a tree, then tied a rope around her neck and said, Whenever you get bored, just jump. Don't worry, mm. it won't hurt. The old uh, woman said wow. she didn't know why, but she felt something was wrong in the woods. And when she got in the woods, she caught the girl while she was jumping. The bus driver then began to drive again, and he suddenly saw a young woman standing on the road. He then stopped the bus. When the young woman got on the bus, the little girl stood up and said, Mommy, you promised- I don't know if I can visit me. Uh-uh. Why? Bro, they have the scariest urban legends. For real? Yeah, they got La La Chusa, which is a shape-shifting witch that looks like an owl and is seven feet tall with the face of a woman. And you're not supposed to go outside if you hear whistling in your window. What else? Oh, and La La Rona. She usually stays near bodies of water. She wears a white gown, long hair, and she's always crying for her children that she actually drowned. So you're next if you see her while driving on the side of the road. Oh my god. There's like this abandoned Disney park in Veracruz, Mexico. What about it? It has a statue that moves at night. There was two people exploring the abandoned park and caught it on video. Fam, you gotta check this out. No, 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 aguanta, aguanta, aguanta. Deja, enfoque, deja que mi cámara enfoque bien, deja que mi cámara enfoque bien. Deja que mi cámara enfoque bien, güey, eso no es el volador. No digas perras mamadas, No digas mamadas, Mm-mm. Wey, es que era el vestido también así, wey. Amarillo. And it's static, frozen. I'm good. I'm good on Mexico. But they do have beautiful women. You right. We might have to risk. This picture was taken at the Pipestone National Monument in Minnesota. You notice anything? Let's look closer. Yeah, that's a demon. Closer! Ah! What the heck is that thing? Ah! I don't know if that's a zombie, a demon, or something else, but stay away from me! Did you know in the Victorian era that it was actually really common to take pictures with the dead? At the time, photography Creepy. was still a relatively new technology, and as we all know, you used to have to stand really, really still. Bind that with the fact that there were a lot of ways that you could pass in the Victorian era, and death was actually really common. And then one day, somebody thought getting pictures would be a really great way to memorialize your recently dead loved ones. And just like today, how we have tons of selfie and video trends, this started the Victorian death photo trend. It became so common and such a thing that a lot of times people who had their first interaction with any type of photography was for this. Some people would even take pictures with their recently passed loved ones. Photographers would often take pictures of people and it would kind of just look like they were sleeping or they would even go so far to pose them to look like they were still alive. Mm. Sometimes photographers would even after the photo was printed paint open eyes on the people to make it look like they were still alive. This actually made for really good photography subjects at the time because since you had to stay really really still, some of the best quality pictures that we have from that era are from people who are not actually alive. Most of the time people couldn't actually hold still for as long as you needed to take a picture, so most of the time there was a little bit of blur in a picture, but whenever you took a picture like this, the image was crystal clear. People would actually spend hours preparing one of their loved ones for this type of photo shoot. And while for a lot of us today, we would honestly kind of think this is a little creepy. Not really, because they do it for funerals. It's no different. You know, you, you they spend hours, if not days, getting a person together for you, everyone to come and look at them. You know, take pictures, whatever they're going to do. You know, it's a different time. But yeah, it's not that creepy to me. It doesn't seem odd at all we have pictures of our loved ones that we get to take throughout their entire lifetime but at this time it was actually really difficult and expensive to get your picture taken so this was a really great way for people to be able to actually remember their loved ones so if you ever see a picture from the victorian area and the picture is really really clear that person might not have actually been alive a couple of months ago mo owens went motorbiking deep into the woods and heard what sounded like someone screaming at the time, people thought it could be a bobcat. Mm-mm. No, -mm. I said help. Hello? Well, his subscribers asked him to go back again, and he did. And this is what happened. Check this out. Oh, God. There's even more bones than last time. Bones? 
Looks like we've already passed it a while ago, but that tree is gone. Oh! It's just dark as hell in here. I'm probably gonna turn around soon. Yeah, he tripping. Oh, there's two ways. Holy crap, dude, this trail going on forever. It just got quiet. It just got really quiet, really fast. Nope, time to go. You see that? Man, look, I keep getting goosebumps watching this, y'all. Look, and it won't even start? Oh, heck no. Nah. That was my cue to leave. That's a weird Definitely. looking bobcat. Oh no. No, 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 no. On January 2014, Brucho Syndicate captured a very strange phenomenon in the middle of a frozen pond somewhere in Europe. He was walking his dog, and it was a very cold day. And he spotted this bizarre water hole in the middle of a frozen pond, and inside of it, well, this is what he captured on camera. Check this out. Yo, something was down there. What is that? Y'all see it moving? See, what, what is that? What y'all think that is? It's un That's just water, right? It's not ice or anything. That's creepy. What the fuck? Vintage audio clips exactly. are haunting. That's how I feel. A castrato was a male singer who was castrated before puberty to retain the higher pitched soprano voice back in the 17 to mid 1800s. Many of the children died due to this barbaric tradition, but the mm. ones that survived did in fact keep their voice, and here is the last known recording of a castrato, and this man was in his 40s. Armin Mibas. Hmm. He received international Animal. attention because he found somebody on the internet that was willing to be murdered and eaten by him. This was all voluntary. According to sources, he posted on the Cannibal Cafe and he was looking for somebody 18 to 20. The Cannibal Cafe. That's a real thing? I, we got cafes for cannibals now. I, wow. Five and very fit. A 43 year old engineer from Berlin messaged him and they met soon after. I've read a lot of sources and there is a video apparently. In the video, Armin cuts off the man's nether region and both of the men try to eat it together. Mm. They were even going into detail about how chewy and tough it was. Mm. And apparently they fed the leftover to the dog. This isn't even the most gruesome part though. He took the man that volunteered to the bathroom, stabbed him in the throat, and then hung him up on a meat hook. There's apparently a four mm. hour long video of all of this documented that was never released and will never be released for obvious reasons. Over the course of the year, Armin stored all the meat in the fridge. In total, he ate about 44 pounds of flesh. Now, even though the man volunteered, this was highly illegal. And Armin posted again in that Cannibal Cafe forum. A college student alerted the authorities on this, and the authorities arrested him in December of 2002. He is serving life in prison now. And reminder, these videos are for informational purposes only. Mm -hmm. Let me know what you guys think about nasty. this in the comment section below and what you want to see next. How animals go to sleep. I don't know why you're watching this because you only go to sleep two days a week. Join the Discord. You got a giraffe now. Giraffes got long um, tongues. So I'm really curious. Yo, neck don't hurt. My neck would beat my ass. I ain't gonna <laughs> we got whales. If I did that, I'm drowning. Yo, what's this? Resident of a native population village in Peru. Claim that they are being attacked and terrorized by aliens. 
seven foot tall beings that some of them are claiming that are aliens anyways. This strange case started for them last month. The people living in the district of Alto Nane, they began encountering inhuman looking entities wearing some kind of green body armor that they described looking like the, the green goblin mm. and also with their ability to levitate. They say when you look at them, you could see them like their feet wasn't completely on the floor. They were hovering. Their community leader said these things are aliens. He said they seemed armored like the Green Goblin from Spider-Man. He said he shot one twice and it just got back up and walked away. There's another case in the village where a girl claims that she was cut at the neck by one of these aliens. What do you guys think about Peru and their invasion? Mm. Do you guys think it's aliens or some people are saying something about something called Project Blue Bean? But let me- Scary TikTok video. Like I ain't gonna lie, I was- Probably within the last six months, I've been talking about visiting Peru prior to any knowledge about any alien invasion or anything like that. But I just want to go down there for some reason, you know. You know how you have a call and just like, hey, you should go to Peru. It just random in them up, but that is crazy. What do you guys think? Y'all think it's an actual alien invasion down there? I mean, it's possible. It's a lot of stuff that goes on in South America, and we don't hear anything about it. Video Spark 122. Picture just yeah. fell. Oh. That is a video that was supposedly taken off the dark web. You know, I've always wondered, what is the dark web? So from my research, it says that the dark web is a part of the internet that is not indexed by search engines. Given its anonymous nature, the dark web is also used for buying and selling illegal drugs, weapons, passwords, and even stolen identities. It gets worse. It gets worse, like trading and selling people for weird things. Mm. Have you ever like seen an influencer talk about how much they bought a girlfriend or a clown or a alien from off the dark web? A lot of people think that this might be a joke sometimes, but it's sometimes it's actually real. Yeah. Things that people fail to understand about the dark web sometimes is that it was actually made by the US government. You should not be afraid to go on the dark web because it's not illegal to go on the dark web. However, it is illegal to purchase things on the dark web, trade things, or to get any type of illegal information. There's even rumors that some of the challenges I do is from the dark web. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Did you know that celebrating one's mm. birthday at the stroke of midnight could invite spirits of the deceased to join in the festivities? According to the legend, choosing to celebrate your birthday at midnight opens a metaphysical portal between the realms of the living and the dead. This belief stems from the idea that spirits are more active during the witching hour, making it possible for them to interact with the living world during the time of transition. Legends often suggest that these spectral guests might engage in various forms of supernatural activity. Objects might move on their own, eerie sounds could fill the air, or attendees might catch fleeting glimpses of ethereal figures dancing among the living. The legend often plays on the fear of the unknown and the mystique surrounding the supernatural. Different variations of the legend emphasize the potential mischievous or malevolent nature of the ghostly attendees. Some stories depict them as playful pranksters, while others portray them as vengeful spirits seeking to cause disturbances. These tales serve to heighten the tension and create a sense of foreboding associated with celebrating birthdays at midnight. If you managed to reach the end of this video, and it's your birthday, I want to wish you the happiest of birthdays, and I hope that your day is filled with blessings, happiness, and laughter. I'm a truck driver <laughs> in the state of Texas. This happened two years ago. I was carrying six pallets of tomatoes down towards Laredo. It was around 11 p.m. and I stopped at a truck stop to get coffee and candy. I was on the 59 going towards my destination when out of nowhere I see lights coming from the side of the road. I thought it was just a car that might be broken down, but it wasn't. As I get closer to it, I see a girl with a dress just looking at my truck. As soon as I pass it, I hear yelling coming from behind my truck. That's when I speed out of there, in shock. I pull over two miles to take a break of what I just witnessed as I was passing the city of Freer, Texas. All the horror goes away, so I feel a little bit more relaxed. I get to my destination at around three in the morning and I just call it a night there. To this day, I think I drove right past La Llorona, but I don't know. And I also refuse to drive towards that highway 
because that's the route I don't like, especially after- With the context of what I'm about something? to tell you, this picture becomes extremely eerie. So Tamla Horsford, she was a 40 year old mom from Georgia. She had gone out with one of her friends to go and celebrate her birthday, right? And have a sleepover. We want you to come, right? So this is Tamla at- There's already something wrong with that picture, y'all. I ain't gonna say it, but if you don't see it, you just don't see it. And if you know, then you know. But there's something wrong with that picture. The sleepover that she was invited to. Just a lot of people on Twitter and social media have noticed she's the only black lady in the room. I ain't even been about to say it. to the public is that around 2 a.m. She said that she was going to go outside, smoke a cigarette, and then head to bed. What's weird and not really like clear about this case is that at least two of the husbands of the other women were there, even though they weren't supposed to be. So at around 1.57 a.m., the security system picked up the back door, opening once, closing again, opening again one more time, and closing for the last time. Tamla's body was found face first at the bottom of the stairs. 7.30 a.m. the next morning, one of the ladies that were at the party woke up and- Yo, we gotta go, we gotta go watch the full video on that one because that one's messed up. Yo, she should've never went to that sleepover. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Oh my god! So some people wanted me to talk about the whole shark tragedy in Egypt. If you didn't know, a man was mauled to death by a shark in an Egyptian resort, Hurghada. And it turns out it was a tiger shark that did it. The thing with tiger sharks is they're walking- they don't walk. They're, they're, they're like garbage disposals with gills and they'll eat, and I really do mean this, literally anything they can swallow. Like we found things like license plates, tires, bags of money, the chicken coops, uh, even a full suit of armor in a tiger shark's stomach. They truly do not care. Tiger sharks may not actively try to murk people, but they also don't discriminate, and they'll usually do the whole exploratory bite thing before they realize that the object isn't something they normally eat. The problem is, tiger sharks are so big that sometimes one bite is really all it takes. Even yeah. if it isn't, if you panic and start thrashing around, which like 99% of people would do because, you know, a shark just bit you, all you're doing is triggering the prey response in a shark, and it's pretty much game over at that point. Yo, Especially that since they're one of the few sharks that will 100% attack you unprovoked. So even though it is really rare, and I'm not like just saying that to minimize it, the reason it makes international news is because when it does happen, it's bad. Also, they ended up catching the shark, dragging it to shore, and beating it to death. And apparently they're gonna mummify the shark and put it in a museum, so yeah, that's uh... Hmm. That's a thing. Look at the teeth on that mug. See? That's why I don't go in the oceans. I'm straight. Land My person. Land Jim. being. Ever since I was a kid, I've always experienced paranormal things. So now that I'm older, it's something that doesn't really scare me anymore. This experience is the one that has stuck with me the most and was the start of me experiencing paranormal events afterwards. I was about seven years old and this took place at my grandma's house. It was a family party and it was already dark. My cousins and I were playing hide and seek and keep in mind that there's a long driveway where you can park your cars. My grandma's house is right next to a very old tunnel as well which was creepy too. So at this point we're playing hide and seek and I went to the end of the driveway which is close to the tunnel to hide. I hid right next to one of the cars that was parked and as soon as I turned to look behind me I see what in my head was the devil walking across the driveway near me. Its skin looked black and red and its knees were somewhat bent but still standing at the point of its toes. I remember looking at it and the eyes were dark red and it had sharp horns. I see it smile at me with sharp teeth and it turned and walked away, still in the same creepy position. I remember I quickly ran away and told my parents and I remember them not paying attention to what I had to say. But years later, they told me that that same creature or whatever it was has appeared to other family members and they have also been scratched and it was once captured in a photo that to this day I'm still trying to find. Hmm, that's some creepy stuff. Family just be going through all this, this stuff, is Tony. This is crazy. So you may have seen this video from a few years back. A little girl claiming that her true identity is somebody named Anjali Grace Dye. It says that she was from Sand Springs and oh, she yeah. lived with her grandfather. Yo, I believe this little girl. I seen this, right? I seen this video. I, it just, man, look. It confirmed a lot of stuff for me in all honesty. I'm gonna let y'all watch it before I go into it though. But that she died in a bloody house. Look, our house is bleeding everywhere. Remember on the street? Your mom's dead? Yeah. My grandfather and my mom. So now I live with you. What's your name? 
Angelie Grace died. Who's Angelie? Me. Just a few months back, an alleged obituary came out for a woman from Sand Springs named Angelie Grace died. And articles were being written that Angelie had died from severe injuries and a tragic murder in Sand Springs. The mother of the little girl actually called the Sand Springs Police Department, trying to confirm if this was actually true. But to their knowledge, they couldn't find anybody in their database with that name. Could this be an actual story of reincarnation? The video of this little girl was posted in 2019, and it wasn't until four years later or this supposed person had died. This is all true. The timeline doesn't add up. Demon in male form that tries to have sex with women while they sleep. It's also the name of a pretty decent band. In Latin, it roughly translates to a nightmare-induced demon, and its earliest known mentions of a demon come from, if you can guess it, where do you think it came? from mesopotamia there you go circa 2400 bce it's often believed these demons want to have offspring with sleeping women and there's actually this crazy legend in brazil that there's an amazon river dolphin or the boto cor de rosa which means pink porpoise that's mm -hmm. part siren and part incubus the legend says that this river dolphin can shape shift into a charming handsome young man and it goes around town and seduces young women and it impregnates them. Some areas called the creature Encantado, which translates to enchanted or charmed. In some areas, a fatherless child might still be called a child of the Boto. According to legend, repeated sex with an incubus can lead to failing health, impaired mental mm. state, or even death. How do you know what an incubus is, though? Dang. Here's the most terrifying video I could find on the dark web. <laughs> In the deep, unfathomable darkness of the dark web, lurks a type of video that haunts the minds of the few souls foolhardy enough to venture into its meanders. These anonymous videos, emerging like furtive shadows, defy all human comprehension. Their origin remains shrouded in an aura of mystery, an enigma carefully preserved by those who create them. Each video is an unsettling journey into the unknown, an ephemeral nightmare that escapes all logic. Chaotic images materialize and dissipate in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a lingering sense of unease. Indistinguishable faces melt into distorted landscapes, while unintelligible whispers slip in like whispers from another world. Watch the end and you'll understand why. Yeah, I don't know what that was on the dark web, but... I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I've never even been on the dark web. I didn't think it was an actual real thing. I just always heard about it. But apparently, there's a lot of videos on the dark web. The next breakthrough is to cut that 10 million in half again. And I think that's mm. doable in well under 20 years. Um, mm. Why? Well, there's only a few diseases that account for the vast majority of those deaths. Uh, diarrhea, pneumonia, and malaria. And so that brings us to the, the first problem uh, that I'll, I'll raise this morning, which is how do we stop a disease, a deadly disease, that's spread by mosquito, mosquitoes? Uh, people didn't know mm. what caused it until uh, the early 1900s when a uh, British military man figured out that it, it was mosquitoes. So it was everywhere. Uh, and two tools helped bring the death rate down. One was... Uh, killing the mosquitoes with DDT. But malaria, the, even the million deaths a year caused by malaria, greatly understate its impact. Uh, over 200 million people at any one time are suffering from it. Mm. Uh, it means that you can't get the economies in these areas going because uh, there's just, it holds things back so much. Now, malaria is, of course, transmitted by mosquitoes. Uh, I brought some here so you could uh, experience this. We'll let let those roam around the uh, auditorium a little bit. There. There's no reason only poor people should have have the experience. There's no reason only poor people should have, Yo, have the experience. Uh, <laughs> and when you use indoor spraying uh, with DDT, 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 DDT and those nets, you can cut deaths by over 50 percent. Mm. And that's happened now in a number of countries. It's great to see. But we have to be careful because malaria, the parasite evolves and the mosquito evolves. So every tool that we've ever had in the past has eventually become ineffective. 
And so you end up with two choices. If you go into a country with the right tools in the right way and you do it vigorously, you can actually get a local eradication. And that's where we saw the malaria map shrinking. Or if you go in kind of half-heartedly, for a period of time, you'll reduce the disease burden, but eventually those tools will become ineffective and the death rate will soar back up again. And the world has gone through this, uh, where it paid attention and then didn't pay attention. Now we're on the upswing. Now there's new drug discovery going on. Our foundation is back to vaccine that's going into phase three trial that starts in a couple months. And that should save over two thirds of lives if it's effective, if it's effective, if it's effective, if it's effective. And so we're going to have these new tools. But that alone doesn't give us the roadmap. Because uh, the roadmap to get rid of this disease involves many things. And so as these elements come together, uh, I'm quite optimistic that we will be able to eradicate malaria. 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 Mm. Dropping bombs. That's crazy. Now they're getting stung up. Wow. Juneteenth, Father's Day celebration. The things. And I don't know what level was unlocked. I don't know who unleashed what. Honey, three million gnats, literally three to five million gnats, came out of nowhere it started flying into people's mouths ears noses mm. throats <laughs> eyes everywhere it was stuck on people's eyelashes it was in their wigs in their hair it was everywhere i know new york had a plague of bees a couple of weeks ago and honey this must be the plague of gnats in baltimore maryland what what is this honey what is this as you can see, people are leaving. That is a surefire way to get the crowd out of there. And that's exactly what happened, y'all. Yo, it's a whole new kind of war out here, for real. Dropping mosquitoes on them. They don't drop bombs no more. They just drop mosquitoes and insects or whatever it is. That's crazy. You clearly seen everybody was just dancing, having a good time. You see the chopper. She said they dropping stuff. Next thing you know, everybody getting stung. That was wild. Isn't it true that you want to fly commercials so that you can fly in luxury? How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen, I paid. <laughs> the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler Perry, and I didn't pay anywhere. Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it... He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. I love your eyes. Again, getting back to the comment, you said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you mm. really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle Yo. not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Why the heck are celebs all painting their Maui properties the same weird shade of blue? Rumors have swirled since October 2022 about Lahaina's elite painting their homes a unique shade of blue. Not just any blue, mind you, but an exact shade. Sounds like a quirky celeb trend, right? But what if there's more to it? Let's delve into the science of lasers, mm. or as they're ominously termed, dews. Why? Because there's something interesting about a specific shade of blue and these energy beams. Here's the science. Certain energy rays interact differently with various colors on the 
spectrum. Some colors are more resistant or reflective, protecting underlying materials from harm. Remember those untouched umbrellas amidst the Lahaina devastation? Skyscraping trees untouched by disaster can be explained away. But how do you justify these seemingly invincible umbrellas? They're not just any umbrellas. They're blue, that exact shade of blue. Is there a connection between this specific royal blue shade, possibly dubbed the Mother Mary Blue, and the dues. Could Lahaina's celebrities have insider knowledge, giving their homes a blue shield against these energy beams? This Lahaina blue mystery might be more than just a color trend. Dive deeper, ask questions, and always be curious. What do you think? Coincidence or a coded message in a hue? You decide. So what y'all think about the blue? I, man, look. It adds up. Whoever did their research on that's a real one because you. I think that article came out in 2022 about why are all these celebrities you know, painting their houses blue. And then, sure enough, what happens happens and all the blue stuff doesn't get burned. So we know what happened there, man. We ain't slow. There's a mysterious number known as Capricar's constant. It was discovered by the Indian mathematician D.R. Capricar in the late 1940s. Start by choosing a random four-digit number. The only restriction is that at least two of the digits must be different. So for example, you couldn't choose 1111, but you could choose 1110. I'll choose the number 8273. Now we'll perform a handful of somewhat bizarre, but rather simple operations. First, arrange the digits in descending order, so 8732. Then write this number in reverse, so 2378. Finally, subtract these two numbers. In this case, I get 6354. Now we're gonna repeat the steps using this number. Write the digits in descending order then subtract the reverse of this number. This time I get 3087. As you might have guessed, we're now going to use this number to repeat the steps once again. The shuffling of digits and subtraction seem like they would lead nowhere, just a never-ending sequence of arbitrary numbers. The astounding thing is that if you do this long enough, you will always eventually hit the number 6174. If you try to keep going, you just get this number back again, forever. As long as at least two of the four digits in your initial number are different, this curious procedure will ultimately pull any four digit number you choose to exactly 6174 yo that's crazy and when you add up 6174 it equals 9 supreme mathematics baby the universe is built off mathematics yo i think they just put out an article today that said dna is written with just mathematics what signs of the coming Mm. Y'all saw all type of stuff all over the world, huh? I thought it was just in Vegas. How do you even clean up after that? The police officer that was over there, he should be investigated. I was told by people who escaped there on foot that the officer had blocked the road. People could not get out. My brother literally had to go cut the chain off of the old sugar mill camp area to let people out of the top of Kilauea Malka because the roads were all blocked because the police were blocking it. We want accountability. It needs to be investigated by a third party that is not associated with the government. I was blocked out several days. I could not come in. It was chaos. People was rioting. What's on those documents for FEMA? I'm an attorney myself. There's so many things that are questionable that has happened here. Right after that, the governor says, oh, I'm going to take the land. He's talking about the state wants to purchase all this land that he should get this land. This land belongs to the people already. Okay, the government is, wait, the government is liable for this, grossly negligent, at least if not criminally negligent. They should clean up all that land, restore that land to the people who own that because they failed. Facts. Yo, uh, what's going on here? Dark skinned, woolly haired, heavily melanated beings inhabited every square inch of the planet Earth long before the continents even shifted. So in 1492, mm. 
when Christopher Columbus and his Spanish conquistador buddies came over here under the Spanish Inquisition and the doctrine of discovery and discovered a land that had already been inhabited for millions of years that had a highly developed, highly advanced civilization already here. They found highly melanated, woolly haired, copper complected people, the organic to the land, original people of the Americas with a highly developed civilization. There's actually more pyramids on this side than there is on that side. In fact, the pyramids over here are older than the ones at Giza. The pyramids over here are older than the ones at Giza. You know what the original name for Mexico City is? Tehuti Wakan. Tehuti Wakan. Tehuti. Thoth, the Egyptian god, the pyramid of the sun, Quetzalcoatl. Tehuti Wakan. That's right. That's why a lot of your African-American friends, if you ask them about their ancestry, they'll tell you that they're Creek or Cherokee or Blackfoot or they have Indian in their family. That's right, because most so-called African-American people are actually American American people, Native American people, Aboriginal American people, organic to the land American people. But humans today we are so smart that we're going to outsmart ourselves the mm, moment we definitely. empower a machine to be bigger smarter faster more intelligent than we are and and it's actually teaching itself yeah. how to teach itself a, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah bro how can you fight that so our, what end of the spectrum are we on now the build or the destroy we're in the introduction stage yeah. we're introducing what we're about to build yeah and that's the crazy thing. So we put a we put a post up about like jobs that AI is going to be taking away. One of the biggest jobs that AI is going to be taking away is computer programmers. A lot of people don't understand that because right. they're like, well, a computer a computer programmer has to program a computer. Thank but you. what happens it's now is that now a computer programmer programs a computer. The computer now well, is com programming another computer. Thank you. So now come on now. The computer programmer is really no. After a while, the computer program mm. is not needed because the computer is intelligent enough to become a teacher. I ain't gonna lie, this AI stuff just sounds scary, don't it? Like, this sounds like the Matrix or some AI and, and a computer teaching the other computer to be smarter than the computer before. So it just gets smarter and smarter and smarter a thousand times faster than a human can. Man, we in for it. No, the program you, computers. You're not understanding. The computer is already more intelligent than the human. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. From a standpoint of education and information storage, it doesn't forget. <laughs> we forget. We could be the most brilliant genius in the globe. Go to the club, <laughs> take a couple <laughs> shots, forget everything for a few hours. They don't do that. God forbid the most intelligent man on the earth gets into a car accident and wakes up with amnesia. Mm. They don't do that. They store this information. It stores this information. I'm already talking like the human. That's dangerous already. <laughs> it stores this information and it can delegate it. It can, you know, it can, it can like, I mean, it, it sends its own self messages. Like this thing, it's like, it's, it's beyond the thought of man. Literally. Literally. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And you talk about multitasking. It does a million things at the same exact time. So when you have a, a machine that actually teaches itself and then teaches how to teach itself a billion times over to the point where we're programming this to not be humanized. There's no human emotion attached to that. It's just basic coding, right? They said, oh yeah, we can always decode it, but what happens for the ones you don't decode or the ones that's too late to decode? Yeah. What, like technology grows so fast, like as humans, are we that arrogant? to believe or are we that arrogant to this point or so entitled that what we have right now is just not enough we want more that's what's gonna kill us is greed greed is what's going to end this world we want more and more always want more this is why i said we need more women leaders because women at the end of the day their motivation is family men on the other hand our motivation is power and you can never get enough of that so as long as men are leading we're gonna die all of us dead. <laughs> dead, dead. Where? dead in the motherfucker. <laughs> you, you in the Always visualize. Yo. Sorry. All the men out there, y'all heard it. Dead in the mother. Just before going to sleep. That's the one most important time, if there is a one most important time. 
before you go to sleep every night, visualize yourself being, doing, and having the good which you desire. Because while you are asleep, your conscious mind is in abeyance for a longer period of time than at any other period in your daily life. And when you impress the subconscious just before going to sleep, the subconscious works with that idea that you've given it, even while you're asleep. The subconscious mind will be correlating you with all of the good which you have visualized. You say you may not realize it, but your mind is working for you, or against you, even while you are asleep. And the mastermind within you says that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And whatever idea you lift up before your subconscious mind, before you go to sleep, that idea is impressed upon the subconscious and it draws that to you. You'll wake up in the morning and the right ideas will just be clicking in your head. You'll meet the right people for the right purposes at the right time. You'll meet strangers, but they'll be right for your right purpose. People will do things for you and they won't even know why. <laughs> I heard somebody say, I know it. You can't lose with the stuff I use. Absolutely no one. Yo, yo, I like what he said at the very end of that, yo. You can't lose with the stuff I use. One. Creepy tic tac be like. If you blink, you'll miss it. Did you see it? Hmm. <laughs> All right, the that's Teletubbies about one of my conspiracy theory claims that the show was inspired by events in a Bulgarian mental facility called La La Land. Psychotic children were purportedly isolated in dark rooms, and apparently four children who died on the same day inspired the characters in Teletubbies. Lala's facial disfigurement and five years of isolation inspired Lala. Tuate, a deaf, facially deformed child, was tied to the fence outdoors in Frostbitten, inspiring Tinky Winky. Donka, Starving and unwell, inspired Dipsy by lying in his vomit for days. Ultimately, Paulina fell into a fire and was roasted alive. A fire? Inspiring Poe. So why are they called the Teletubbies? The children's main source of comfort were the television sets in their room. And when they got word that the mental institution was getting rid of them, the children concocted a plan to hide the TVs. The children would rip out their insides to hide mm. the miniature TV sets that were too big to swallow, only to be found dead by the returning caregivers the next morning. Yo, isn't it? That's crazy. Teletubbies, right? But wouldn't they want to call it Teletummies? Weird how the Simpsons always predict the future? It's because they have to show you their playbook. Who is they and what playbook? The people who maintain control have to show you how they're controlling you. It's a galactic law that you cannot manipulate a planet without the inhabitants knowing. They subliminally tell you through fiction and jokes, hence why they control the media. It's called writers and imagination. Y'all swear everything is a conspiracy theory. None of this stuff is real. We can both agree that cigarettes are poisonous and contribute to a shorter life, right? Obviously, yeah. So if I sold you a pack of cigarettes and never warned you about the harm they cause, I'd be wrong, right? Absolutely. So you would agree that I'm kind of responsible for your death? Yeah, because you didn't warn me about the potential harm. Mm -hmm. But what if I display a sign saying poisonous cigarettes and you still decide to smoke it, resulting in your own death? Then that's not on you because I chose to do it. And that's how it works. That's how it works, yo. yo. Family, this timeline's not making any sense. It's not making any sense, fam. Hmm. This is not the real world. Look, family, this is the Hindenburg. 1937 this is being filmed in 1937 not only is the hd quality mind blowing but look at the city fam remember this is the hindenburg 1937 literally one hour before it went down in a blazing inferno over new jersey the hindenburg this is historical this is not conspiracy theory all right this is live in your face this is the hindenburg airship over new york city 1937 Take away 37 years, you leave, you get left with 1900. Minus another year, that's 1899. So get this straight, let me get this straight. If you took away 87 years, you'd be back in motherfucking 1850. When did they start construction of this city, fam? When did they start building this? Because in the 1800s, there was no such thing as a power tool. There was horses and buggies. 
There was no power tools, nothing of the sort. Bam, you're looking at 1937, the Empire State Building. Everything is there already. It looks like New York right now, family. How? When did they start do. construction? Who built this? Family, you're looking at Tartaria, bro. You're looking at Tartaria. Come on, man, stop playing. The timeline doesn't make any sense. Like I said, 37 years from 1937, take away 37 years, you get 1900. Minus another 50, that's 1850. Horse and buggy business. That's when they had to start constructing this city for it to be here now. Family, this city did not take no 100 years to build. It did not take no 50 years to build. This is a couple hundred years worth of construction right here. Got they it. had to start this in the 1800s, early 1800s, late 1700s. How? What tools did they use to do this? Family, it's all bullshit. This is Tartaria. You're still in Tartaria. Look at these fucking cities. All they did was tear down all the real shit and put up a bunch of flimsy glass buildings and shit. Talking about Twin Towers and all these goofy shits. That's all they did. Put up their uh, brutalistic architecture to cover over what was already there. Fam, the infrastructure was already here. We built this shit. There's no mm -hmm. fucking way. When they came to these motherfucking United States of America, these cities was already here. How in the fuck? 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. 1400, 1500, 1600, 1700, 1800, 1900. Who built these cities? You got here in the 1400s. You weren't building it in the 1500s. You weren't building it in the 1600s. You definitely weren't building it in the 1700s or the 1800. You didn't have power tools. So when did you start building this? In the 1900s? Well, this mm. is 1937. It took you 37 years to do all this? <laughs> anyway, family, more receipts from the source chop. Don't let these monkeys tell you shit. You are literally looking at Tartaria. And this airship you're looking at, the Hindenburg, it's also Tartarian. Let's go, man. Chop, chop. Yeah. Yeah, so council, they want us to believe that these people who came over with Columbus, these are uh, pilgrims and shit, who didn't even know how to plant food. Didn't know how to eat an orange. Didn't know about seasoning. The most simple basic shit in life they did not know. You want me to believe that they came over here and built all this. They got here in 1492. What the fuck are you talking mm. about, nigga? That's a couple hundred years. They didn't mm. even know how to farm. They spent 90% of the time dying before we taught them how to plant fucking food. What are mm. you talking about? Trying to tell me that while you were learning to farm, simple fucking farm, you were engineering and building these motherfucking cities? Yeah, right, nigga. You came and stole our shit. Council, it's not that deep. The math isn't even that hard. First power tool invented 1895, and it took a while before everyone got to them. So you mean to tell me from 1900 to 1937, y'all had every city in the United States and around the world built? Man, go take a flying fuck. I swear to God, well, if yo, yo, I'm, I hope y'all paid attention to that. I hope y'all realized what's going on here because clearly these cities have been here a lot longer than what they say in some type of Black Mirror episode or something. So you guys all know Roundup, right? The same Roundup that is settling for over $11 billion because their spray causes cancer. Well, they market that they kill weeds such as clovers, dandelions, nettles, thistles, chickweed. You know what's common with every single one of those weeds? Every single one of them is medicine. Chickweeds, amazing for fertility. The thistles, amazing for the liver. Dandelions, all body detoxifier. The nettle and the clover, really good for the lungs, for asthma, um, for the skin. Every single one of those is medicine. But yet we're spraying something that causes cancer on top of all of that medicine. And instead, we get sick from that spray, from our processed foods, from our sedentary mm. lifestyles. And what do we do? We go to Big Pharma so that they can put more poisons in our body while mm. putting us in debt. Yet our creator loved us enough where they put all of these weeds, all of these herbs here everywhere on the earth so that we can use it as medicine. You don't even need to plant them. The wind will take them and put the seeds and help them grow everywhere so that we can heal our bodies naturally. So 
again, we're living in some type of Black Mirror episode. But if you're looking to wake up from this, go to our site, www.jordanraw.com. We have a whole bunch of herbal blends and teas that use all of those herbs so that you can heal your body naturally. I will knock you! Yo, we definitely living in the Twilight Zone or something. Like, all of us is just brainwashed. The whole world gotta be brainwashed at this point if that's the case. Fucking keep down your fucking throat, you motherfucker! If you don't want to fucking be here, get the fuck out! You watch your TV, okay. but with this hack, your TV can watch you. Show us how that works. So what? one of the things that we were able to do with the smart TV platform was actually um, abuse the, the browser to, to the extent that we could actually gain access to the camera that's built into the TV. Right. And so what we can prove here is that with a little bit of extra code, Mm. turn the camera on in your browser. Wow. And while this is evident to you right here because, we, uh, because we've designed it that way, this is something that we can do invisibly and actually have the camera running behind the web page that you're, that you're looking at. So what this means is I could be sitting here watching TV from my, from my bedroom and you could be anywhere in the world looking at this image of me watching. Yep, I could be sitting on a laptop in a cafe in Paris. And as long as mm -hmm. I have a network connection, I'd be able to get into your TV and access the camera. But the kind of scary things about it is that it doesn't actually give any indication that the camera's on. Um, and there is no little LED that shows up when the camera's on. So it could actually be watching you and you'd never even know. What is a, a smart TV? And wh why is it a playground, essentially, for hackers? Right. It's a computer. So instead of just being you know, a tube and some other electronics, um, now it has a web browser and it has, you know, a lot of devices are running Linux. But the real danger mm -hmm. is um, when people start using smart TVs for things like online banking, we can take a popular bank address and translate that into um, a different IP address to a site that, that directs to a site that we control. So it may look like your bank's login, but you're actually entering a username and password that goes to us instead of your bank. In a statement to CNN Money, Samsung says it takes consumer privacy very seriously. The camera can be turned into the bezel of the TV so that the lens is covered or disabled by pushing the camera inside the bezel. The TV owner can also unplug the TV from the home network when the smart TV features are not in use. As an added precaution, we also recommend that customers use encrypted wireless access points when using connected devices. Let me just... I'm going back to the old school ways. Give me a big old box TV, the big screen ones, and I'll be straight. Let's answer a question that I always get. Who created God? Have y'all ever heard of the theory of general relativity? It's what Einstein is famous for. In his calculations, he started to realize that the universe was not eternal. It had a beginning. Now this leads us to the law of causality. Everything that came to be needs a cause. So Einstein clearly knew that if the universe had a beginning, it needed a cause. Let's go to the Big Bang Theory. There was no space, no time, and no matter before the Big Bang. The universe emerged out of nothingness. What does that mean? Since it's impossible for the universe to be able to create itself because it didn't exist in order to be able to create itself, nature and the universe itself was just a big effect that was caused by what are we left with an extremely powerful extremely intelligent precise given the precision that our universe was created with personal entity that is capable of existing outside of time space and matter mm. that can't be nothing but god and for people that are like okay well how do you know that it's like christianity's god there's only one god but there's a very famous astronomer named robert jastrow his credentials as a scientist are impeccable being agnostic he's not even a christian he said that all of the essential elements of the Big Bang Theory line up with biblical creation because this is how God works God speaks something and then science runs to catch up with what he said science doesn't create anything science studies creation let me just answer a question that I always get who created God what I say I said everything with a beginning everything that came to be needs a cause God didn't come to be God is eternal, the way a lot of people thought the universe was until science disproved it. So God doesn't need a cause or a creator. He is the cause. The universe is the effect. Don't just take my word for it. Go look into it for yourself. One more thing. Evidence is not a substitute for faith. Following God is not a matter of evidence or proof. It's a matter of the will. You have to want to do it so you can have the peace that you're looking for. And if you don't want to make that choice, no amount of evidence is going to convince you to. You have to want to. 
So what kind of wildfire melts aluminum from the cars, melts the cars into the ground, but doesn't melt the asphalt? Let's get out our pen and paper and do some quick math. Aluminum melts at 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit. And asphalt's melting point is about 343 degrees Fahrenheit. So how in the world is it possible to have aluminum melted from the cars, but the asphalt isn't melted? Well, I'm gonna show you how this is possible mm. right now. The world's first airborne directed energy weapon. The airborne laser, also known as the ABL. ABL. Just mounting the ABL requires one of the most sophisticated and elaborate modifications in history. The entire nose section is removed and retrofitted. And the world's largest titanium plate is installed to hold the enormous turret-mounted laser in place. The ABL system is designed to find, track, and destroy an enemy target in the air and on the ground. It can loiter at 40,000 feet for five hours, refuel in midair, yeah. and destroy a target 60 miles away in less than a second. So these things just up in the air, just chilling all day. You probably can't even see it with your naked eye. They just up there and just beam. Man, I'm scared now. <laughs> this is why everything in blue was still intact. Just like these umbrellas. Lasers can actually be programmed for different wavelengths. Notice how it doesn't burn the blue, but it burns everything else. In this episode of The Simpsons, they erect a new statue. When the sun hits it, it causes a laser beam. The same statue that was mysteriously placed in Hawaii. And now let's look at the mm. aftermath. Everything is disintegrated except for this blue umbrella. It's time to wake up, people. Peace. What would you do if you was riding wow. Spirit Airlines and the clouds start coming through the plane like this? I don't know. What would you do? Be scared? I freak out. I don't know about you, but I definitely would freak out. Yo, I want to thank all the subscribers who sent me those videos. Those videos was definitely on point. But yeah, if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe, turn your notification bell on, and until next time, YouTube, peace.